Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 31st of July, the last day of the July Lico Day Challenge. So if you've been here with me, uh, congratulations and thank you, I suppose. Uh, we'll be doing August as well. I mean, you know me now. Uh, we have a 12, 16, and that, that's a 1,216 day streak going. So I don't know. It'll probably end at some point, but not quite yet. So let's do it together. Let's do more. Anyway, today's farm is 712. Minimum ASCII delete sum for two strings. Okay, what are we doing here? We turn the lowest ASCII sum of deleted characters to make two strings equal. Okay, so we're deleting characters um where the cost is i mean this is um you know very standard e edit distance uh problem uh which is you know just dynamic programming of course uh or uh, what are the people's names there's also like the the the, the something something distance which is named after people which i always forget but of course it's not um you know there is a variation where add and change is infinity and delete is this ASCII cost, right? And you can kind of just, you know, write it that way. If you want to just copy and paste and change some some, uh, some minor things. Otherwise, uh, yeah, it's going to be, well, actually, let me double check. Okay, yeah, N is N and M or whatever is a thousand, so it should be good. Um, yeah, I don't really have notes on this one, so let's get started. Uh, the idea here is just we brute force what happens when we delete a character. Um, so, okay, so... For this particular one, we have to match. Uh, we have to match the entire string, right? So then we have. So let's. So the idea here is just. So, okay, well in that case, let's match the first two characters or first one character of each string because we have to start from somewhere, right? So um, and of course, if you just start by the character by character, um, you can kind of it actually do the way that in canonical way of doing it is you're trying to match the suffix, right? Meaning the suffix of string one and the suffix of string two, um, knowing that the prefix is already calculated. Um, and then you kind of do do math on that. And of course, the, the length of the suffix or some or the length of the prefix that you already calculated can be used um, as um, the determinant uh, because they only end distinct inputs for each one. So uh, maybe I'm going too fast. If not, if I am, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm going too slow. Uh, well, that part you can solve easily. You can skip for it. But uh, but yeah, that's why when you see some people do something like uh, index one, index two, that's what it really means, right? You can it can mean a couple of things depending on how you like to phrase it. But like for example, you can mean the index one is equal to uh, the number of characters we already processed uh or like you know that's one way one interpretation you can also say um the first index of the suffix we're we're um calculating the min for uh or something like this right so there are a couple of ways to interpret it um and and these things are fine they're interchangeable but having uh having a consistent understanding of these ways to think about it will allow you to kind of you know like um you know like uh, uh f this is a easy ish problem or it's a medium but it's one that's very well studied so it's a uh, more more easy but but as you get harder and harder and more difficult problems that require using two or three or four of these random uh observations and techniques uh that's when having a very very solid base and a very solid understanding will come into play uh which uh, maybe sometimes you and I don't, right? So yeah, so if index, uh, let's just say, you know, n1, uh, s1, n2 is equal to s2, and then you have, uh, duh, 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 duh. if index 1 is equal to n1, that, that means that we're done with n1, so we have to delete the rest of index 2. Um, I was going to just actually write something like n2 minus index 2, but that's actually wrong, right? That's not the, the base cost. Um, because um, yeah, that's not the base cost because you you have to delete each ASCII one at a time. So it's actually something like return uh, get min index one index two plus one plus ASCII odd or something. Or you just do a sum, but I think maybe a sum. Um, I think if you just if you do a naive sum, technically maybe there's a degenerate case. So that's maybe why I didn't do it that way. 
but but then here if you do it this way you have to think you have to be careful about the memorization so that's uh the thing right so yeah so then do -do 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 um, and then now maybe if index one is you go to n one and index two is you go to n two then we return zero because then we have no characters left and by default that means that they both are done right uh, same idea here right it, Right, and then now um, we just have to. Now you have this uh, suffix one and suffix two, both on on the strings. And then the question is, well, now uh, you only have if they're equal, then you, you're good, right? So because, well, I'm trying. To, I mean, so th sometimes you can make some optimizations, but with these optimizations, you have to prove it, right? And the optimizations that I'm thinking in my mind, I think it should be true, but I don't, but I don't know how to prove it off my head. And if I'm on a contest, I don't want to spend time proving it. Um, and it's not that necessary of an optimization necessarily. Uh, what I was going to say is that like, I was going to do something like maybe if S1 index one is equal to S2 index two, then we just return get min index one plus one, index two plus two uh, plus one, right? And that's it. Um, so in theory, so this is the the you know just go to the next index, but but um, I think this is something that I talked about a little bit on the last Q three where people make um, make a, 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 a how do you say it like a very very um, like very uh, unnoticeable observation. Um, that they maybe can convince themselves, but it's not proven, right? And yeah, it, it worked out in that case for the, I'm talking about the Q3, it worked out in that case because, um, well, greedy works sometimes, right? That's why sometimes people do greedy. Um, but, but during, but I don't always, you know, it is, you know, maybe sometimes it's just me getting burned in the past by, by solutions that I thought is, would work. So now I'm like very, like, like I don't need a hard, hard proof like a mathematician, but but at least for me, like I, I need like some indication of, um, you know. But that that's why that's why people were able to get away quickly, and I kind of wrote it in a way that was more conservative, but end up taking more, way more time and also just a lot of silly mistakes. But that's another story. And what I mean by that, if you want to kind of follow along, why I was talking about it, is that here this is not always the op ideal, right? So the 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 promise that we have for this function is that th this gives, I mean, this may be obvious, but this gives the optimal answer for the suffix index one and index two, right? For each of the string, I'm too lazy to write it out, but, right? But it's not always clear to me that this is actually the best answer, right? And what I mean by that is that um, the other way to write it is that you can write best is equal to infinity, right? For some big number. And then, and then in this case, you would just write best is equal to min of best this. And this is just, that means that now, instead of always returning the skip thing, um, now you're just like, okay, well, we can't skip it if we want to, so let's consider it. If we still get the best answer, then then do it. Otherwise, we don't do it, right? Um, and then, of course, in the other cases, now you have... Um, you know, just delete one of them, one from the left and one from the right. Um, technically, you can also delete from, from both, but because if you delete one from the left, one from the right, and you do it exhaustively, um, deleting them from both, including the causes, are kind of, you know, the uh, a state that you will get to anyway. So that's why you don't need to do that explicitly. But yeah, uh, right. And then same, but for the left one. Hopefully, I'm not going too fast. I mean, I think we've been doing the harder DPs uh, recently, so I, I, I don't know, right? And that's basically the idea, minus maybe typos, because I've been really bad in typos lately. Uh, yeah, and of course, the, the next thing that you know I was going to do is uh, memorization, right? So we have to kind of be careful, and so let's do it. Uh, what, are, what are we doing? Uh, yeah, so we know that index 1 goes from uh, 0 to n1, index 2 goes to zero, from 0 to n2, and, well, 
that's really all you need to know. Uh, we only do three operations-ish. Uh, I mean, all of one operations, right? We don't have any for loops. Uh, I mean, it's not the only thing, but you know. Uh, let's actually do it this way. Uh, and uh, uh, I kind of messed them up, has cash in. Yeah, and I know you can write this differently. The way that I write this is just for mostly teaching purposes. So that's, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, and you do want to memorize this so that it doesn't get in the loop every time. Otherwise, you kind of get, uh, well, maybe that's okay in the sense that it would degenerate into n square, but I guess overall it would be n square anyway, and it only happens for n1 because for every one of those, uh, for every n1 answers, you, I don't know, right? So maybe it's not that bad, but, but eh, you know, I don't have any contests like in, a, in 20 minutes, so I could kind of. Uh, take my time to do it, right? Otherwise, yeah, you could just do something like this. Right? Yeah, this is very awkward, actually. This is why you use a decorator in uh, in uh, what you call it. Um, and in C++, you use that like memory address thing to kind of loop around, which is pretty cool actually, but anyway, yeah, oops. Still looks okay. Let's give it a quick submit. Hopefully I don't have any silly mistakes. And yeah, uh, have I not done this before? Huh? I mean, it. Uh, maybe I haven't submitted a neat code before, but you know, obviously I've done either this one or similar before. So yeah. Um, so, okay, so I, I don't, I don't remember my exact YouTube video, but I have a, uh, let me look, look it up real quick. Uh, but yeah, but what, what I was going to say with respect to that is that, um, you know, so what's the complexity, right? I mean, we kind of went over it as N1 times N2, um, it's the number of inputs. So the total time is going to be N1 times N2 or quadratic ish, um, and space as well, right? But uh, why, why I kind of bring that up is that, if I could find my, my thingies, um, is that I actually do, because this is one of my uh, favorite things. Uh, huh. oh, I, I always forget that I'm in Hong Kong when I, when I have this thing. Um, well, hopefully. Yeah, there's a, I basically have a, 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 a DB progression uh, so that the idea is that from here you can convert this to to the top down, or this is the top down. You can convert it to the bottoms up. Um, it's worth practicing because it it does help in a lot of different ways, um, especially just being more familiar with how to do these uh, bottoms up. Because uh, once you do more and more practice, you're able to do it without expressing converting it. You're able to kind of see the matrix of your world. Actually, I guess that's a pun because. It's a DP matrix, but in any case, you're able to see see how to kind of like how to see transitions more clearly before writing the code, and then you're able to kind of just jump straight to the bottoms up. Uh, and I think that some people do get taught that way. Um, but yeah, but after you do that, the the key thing for this one is that you can kind of see the space optimization part, and here you can, you're able to reduce it to all of n one plus n two, the linear uh, of one of those things. So which is which is kind of a nice trick to have. Uh, and for an interview, definitely something that, you know, I don't know if it's necessary, but it, it's nice. Uh, yeah, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Uh, have a great rest of the weekend. If it's still on the weekend. Uh, have a great rest of the week and have a great rest of the August. So yeah, stay good, stay healthy, take your mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.